Welcome to Dev Dive Episode 6. This week I'm here with Riot Legend Larry, my co-host. He's going to be our guest today talking about his new role at Riot and also some tips and tricks on how to get into the games industry as a whole. Hey, Larry, welcome to the show again. <laughs> hey, Ben. A little weird, right? Since, like, welcome to the show, as you always are. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't prepared uh, to introduce my co-host. <laughs> All right, so so to get right into it, you have a new job at Riot now, don't you? I do, and I, I think if, like, we've mentioned it a couple times in some of the other episodes, and it wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't official, but um, I got the email like last last week, uh, where my allocation officially has been moved over. So I'm split allocation between League of Legends, uh, the team, and uh, creative dev, creative development. So uh, I am the new resource manager for the narrative team at Riot Games. So what sort of differences does that? have from your old job as a a art outsource manager like what is the day-to-day changes that you've seen you know actually it's really funny it's not going to be too different in terms of just what i do um it's more about like what i focus on (laughs) uh but to give a little explanation so an art outsource manager as the title kind of implies i deal with art that is made externally of the studio um so i'm kind of like the point of contact i uh, am a subject matter expert and have practice with finance uh or dealing with the finance teams helping uh getting the information and the contract set up doing uh bid approvals and stuff as well as just production work making sure that things are going you know are on schedule or being sent out properly or coming back that feedback is sent so i we can we could really go into all of that but the new job uh, or the new position with the narrative team, it's very similar. It's just a larger scope, and I don't deal exclusively with external people. I will deal both internally and externally. So it's it's a lot of the same ideas behind the work, um, just a different scope. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, including both internal and external. So it's not a, it's not as big as a leap as what I originally thought, but you're still you're doing more you're doing the same stuff but with more types of of people. Yeah, yeah. Uh it's kind of like what would I say? It's kind of like going from uh, Well, that that's that that makes it sound much more important than what it is. I was going <laughs> to no, say go it's kind of like go going flatter yourself. It's it's kind of like going from like um uh, a lead artist like a, a you know a, seed, a senior artist to a director like it's you still use the same skills it's still the same idea it's just like more scope like instead of being responsible for one or two projects you're responsible for like an entire you know uh an entire uh game right <laughs> stuff like that so it's the same idea where it's like it's still the same sort of work ish it's just much Ex- much more expansive <laughs> but the other thing is um i'm going from art to narrative so instead of traditional art 3d illustration stuff like that i uh, will be working with the narrative team so the people who the writers and editors on the on the narrative team um do you work at all with with universe with what vivi does uh yeah they're actually what we would call one of our customers <laughs> um well, that's the old setup. The the new setup, they're restructuring a little bit. Uh, we they would be one of our partners. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I do interact with her team uh, more. Uh, <laughs> so I do see her more. I actually sit on the same floor as as her now. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh, did you move yeah, away the, from uh, JD? I did. Oh, I did. so sad now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. we're getting in the weeds a little bit. Anyway, um, well, congratulations, yeah. Larry. That's that's fantastic. We're very happy to hear that. Yeah, um, thank you, thank you. So, do you want to get into into what we were talking about, like the how to get into game dev? Yeah, that's so. This this question comes up pretty often. Uh, you know, hey, I want to get into the games industry. How do I do it? Um, and we've had that topic come up a couple times in our other podcasts like hey 
we have a concept from Riot Games here, and we try to talk to them specifically about like, what do you do? Um, what are some important skills and things like that, which kind of circles around that question of how to get into the industry. Uh, and I, re- I was recently listening to a- another podcast or another um, like Office Hours show. Actually, I think his show is called Office Hours. Um, <laughs> but he, he said something that was really, really good, and I loved it. He goes, a lot of times when people ask questions or search for questions online, um, you kind of get that Buzzfeed, like, yeah. top five tips, right? And, and he goes, I want this to be- uh, tips that dev studios don't want you to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then when you read them, they're just kind of like general... Yeah, there's just general advice and he goes what i want to do is is give you good specific concrete examples or steps um and i was like yeah that's actually that's very much how i feel uh and would love to be able to bring to anybody asking i you know i want to be in the games industry how do i do it so that's that's the intent behind this particular i guess talk whatever <laughs> is to is to kind of give people some good concrete um advice uh, a lot of it will be more like your mindset how you approach it um instead of like specifically as an artist do these things and you will you know move forward in that way uh but we can't i can't provide some of that <laughs> and the reason i don't do that is because i'm not an artist i could talk to you like hey if i want to be a, a manager or uh work in production i could definitely do that for that and we'll probably get into it as well um but yeah, so this first part is going to be very much about just general mentality. Uh, so the first thing when people say, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause there to let that sink in really quick. Also gives me a second to get my thoughts together. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to preface what Larry's about to say, if you have a friend or anyone who does want to get into the games industry, um, point them towards this, episode, this specific episode of the podcast. This is going to be a great resource for people even beginners or even people who haven't even started yet. So uh, so I will talk to students at uh, Purdue University. I went to school at Purdue. Um, and a lot of them will say, you know, I want to get into the games industry. And so I normally the first question I ask people, and it's the first question I'd ask anyone saying that is, well, what do you want to do? You know, like, just understand that. Um, people tend to have you know, like an idea, hey, you know, I want to, I love, you know, I love playing games. I love art. I love this. I love that. And that's, that's good. That's, that's a good starting point. But when I say, what do you want to do? I'm specifically asking what, what title, what job are you looking for? Which brings us to our first point. A lot of people don't realize just how many positions there are, not only in game development, but at a game studio. Um, you have the big three when it comes to game development, which is art, engineering, and design. And within those buckets, it seems pretty self-explanatory. Engineers are engineers, artists, art is artists, designers are designers. But anyone who's played a game and looked at the credits, the, the <laughs> credits in a game are fucking like, it takes a lot a of people. Yeah, it takes a lot of people to do this stuff. And are, do you think that every one of those people every one of those individuals have the same title experience you know roles and responsibilities no they're they're specialized they have specific things that they do and they do well so if you're not sure if i ask you the question what do you want to do what job do you want in the games industry and you kind of have a general oh i want to be a game designer okay or oh i want to be an, an an artist a 3d artist okay that's a good start um Go look at the game credit, your favorite game, whatever that is. Look at the credits and then start looking up the, the job descriptions for the titles that you see. Uh, lead 3D artist, lead character artist, or just character artist, uh, character animator, environment artist, uh, producer, associate producer, game design, because, uh, you know, the game designers, because within each of those things that we just mentioned there are sub disciplines like game design is broken up into multiple different types of design depending on what studio you work at so at league most of them are champion designers 
because that's what we have. Um, but you also have designers who work on things like um, the PVE modes that came out for like Odyssey or uh, what was the other one? Uh, Project. Like those had designers uh, assigned to it and they had a, a different skill set. The life balance team, they, they are uh, a little more specialized in, again, balance, um, but like working on items as well as specific abilities versus overall champion design um like even within even within something as simple or simple that's not the right as straightforward <laughs> as saying game design there's a lot underneath that there's <laughs> there's a lot of specifics to that and i've seen this in in my own experience when you just say, I want to be a game designer, and they say, that's nice. What do you want to do? What kind of a game designer? What do you want to focus on? And you can't answer that. It it shows a certain sense of, well, one, unpreparedness, and also uh, just a certain lacking of, of knowledge and understanding. Uh, and that's, that's, Im- that's important to have. Um, I'm not sure how to follow that up. That's kind of like a dead end conversation because that's just me going. You should. It's sort of you like when when you ask a kid you what they want to be in the in the group and they say like I want to work at Nintendo or I want to work at uh, uh, Microsoft. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you want to do there at Nintendo or at Microsoft? Do you want to be blank? You want to work on the games? And then kind of overarching what you were talking about when you said um, all the different facets of people who work at these game studios. Uh, you mentioned the people who work directly on the games, but there's also, uh, we were talking about this before the podcast, there's also more people who work with the studio and help the studio actually run. Like there's the business yeah. side, the people who actually run the business, um, the people who run the, the company as a whole, like the people who are actually managing the people instead of just working on the game. Um, and then we had a few others. What were they? I mean, um, oh, public relations like, people, the people, yeah. the people who work yep. with the communities and and make sure that everything and public relations That's covers so many different facets. Team. Yeah, it covers so many yeah. different facets. You have the people who are actually running the social medias. Um, for a game like League of Legends, you have the people who are running the broadcast teams. Um, I don't think, yep. generally speaking, you'd call them public relations, but I'm grouping them together in that role for this one. <laughs> um the broadcast sure. team the casters uh you have the people who set up referees uh for lcs it, it it just overarches so many different things and a lot of these people have double roles at riot i believe they do multiple things where they they're both a, a caster or a broadcast team and they also do something else um yeah. i know that uh who was it jet there was a, a recent caster who also just got a job on the balance team um i forget exactly who it was but it's 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 very cool to see like how many different roles you can take on at a company like that. Yeah. And and that goes back to what we said. There's game development and then there's working at a game studio. Um game development is kinda like uh what do you call it? That's that's like a practice. That's a that's a that's a a thing you do, right? A mm-hmm. thing you make. But, you know, working at a game studio, that's a business and you know, a studio is is like any other business. It needs operational people. It needs, um, <laughs> like for instance, one of my one of the one of my friends that I play D and D with every Tuesday. Uh, two of them, they're on the finance team, and they don't touch the game at all. But I guarantee you, without them, my job would be significantly harder because I wouldn't be paid. <laughs> Like yeah. they make sure that I have the benefits that I need. They make sure that I get paid the right amount that I'm supposed to get, that it gets into my bank account. Um, and I mean, but there, there's more than just the finance team in general. They have a lot of people on that team that go from a- anything from like vendor and contract negotiations um, to payments to uh, benefits that, that, you know, right. Like, like negotiating the benefits that we get. So if you don't, then that's, that's another point too. Cause some people are like, Oh, I love video games, but I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not an engineer. I'm not an artist. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like if you love video games and you want to work in the video games industry, there are plenty of jobs out there that aren't creative focused. Um, like again, a business is a business and they need people there. 
And at Riot, there's this idea that if that if you have a passion for games, regardless of what kind of game, regardless of who you are, if you just if you have a passion for it, it means you can empathize with the player base. It means you can empathize with people who also love playing video games, and that makes you uniquely positioned in your field to see how setting up something in one way would be more beneficial than setting it up in a different way. Because setting up a finance team for a bank versus a game studio would be radically different. Um, and so that's that's kind of one of the one of the things that people will overlook uh, when talking about that. I I know a couple people. Uh, see here, was it Shane? Yeah, Shane. Shane is my is my purchasing partner. He's on the finance team. I interact with him a lot, a lot. And he worked at Boeing. He was in the military before, and then he worked at Boeing, and now he's at a game studio because he said as a as a kid I grew up playing video games and. But I, I never got into it. But I, I got this skill and this craft somewhere else, and by just happenstance, you know, I rediscovered my love for gaming, and then went out to look for jobs, and I found Riot, and like that's they want people who have that deep love and also have that craft set elsewhere. So yeah, that's another and, and just to point. tangent off a little bit like that, um, this sort of thing extends for more than just game dev. Uh, for example, a friend of ours actually just got a job at Rooster Teeth, um, which is a, a very interesting, I think they're called a, a production company now. But when Rooster Teeth mm. first started out, they were basically just a, a internet content maker. They would make yeah. um, YouTube yeah. series. They'd make uh, some uh, movies and stuff like that. But um, a lot of the people who first started out at Rooster Teeth um, they started out in in roles that you wouldn't necessarily be you wouldn't necessarily consider those people like working in production they were they would be like um office assistants um social media managers stuff like that and then they throughout the evolution of the company they transitioned into these more of like on screen talent roles there most of the main people who worked there um outside of the the people who started the company started out doing different roles at the company or they started out in the community doing um, manager roles or, or or engineering websites and stuff like that. Um, and then they, they were able to leapfrog working at that company. They could see roles that needed to be filled because when you're working in a company, you have a, a unique position that people outside the company don't have where obviously you already know everyone who works there or you know a, a few of the people who work there. And you also have um, knowledge on how these positions, how the how the company works, how these positions usually get filled, um, the the type of skills you need to do there, and then you can you can learn on the job while doing that. And um, I'm not sure if it works the same way at all companies, but for a, a big example of that would be like if maybe you could get a job um, at Riot doing something a little more simple, like maybe working on the social media team. Um, as a junior junior social media associate, and then using that leverage to move up towards the uh, broadcast team for LCS, or um, eventually even becoming a caster or something like that. I don't know any specific examples off the top of my head of that actually happening, but um, it's always good to look at stepping stools where even if you aren't directly working on something that you maybe want to do as your dream job, you could use that as leverage to move forward into something that you're more interested in. Yeah. At that company. Yes. Yes. Um, before we get, get into that, because that's, that's a, a huge part of, of the advice that I would give anybody. Uh, yesterday was International Women's Day. And at Riot, um, they wanted to showcase uh, some of the you know, awesome women that work at the company and the things that they do and the, things that they, the challenges that they face. And um, I think... I, th I think most people know her, uh, uh, JJ. Um, she is one of the. I'm trying to re riot Stellari. I think is. Oh her tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Her. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's so, okay. So just real quickly, there's a very interesting parallel between um, people who work at Riot and people who don't work at Riot. Um, the people who work at Riot <laughs> never know the people who work at Riot by their Riot names, or they hardly ever do. 
And the people who don't work at Riot, like me, only know people by their Riot names. Yeah, like in games, they're like, oh, do you know Riot such and such? And I'm like, yeah. maybe, but I don't know them by that name. I probably yeah. just call them John, right? You know? Um, but yeah, so Riot Stellari for the people out there. Um, I didn't realize this, but uh, she worked uh, as, or she went to school with for like uh, basically Japanese, uh, uh, for for sociopolitics and then uh, with a focus in Japanese and she wanted to work in the UN and she did I think work in a subsector of the UN for a little bit but I'm like what like yeah, it's such she, a weird she was, shift <laughs> yeah she she was talking about uh, her story and like how she got into the games industry and where she started from and I I you know I'd never heard it in detail I knew that she didn't start in the games industry outright but like hardly anyone ever does. And but just, you know, like, wow, like she went from that to being uh, one of the skins producers. And and if not, sounds like an interesting guest on the podcast for the future. Maybe, (laughs) Mm, maybe. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, like it's it was interesting to hear her story. And so many other people there, too, like shared their so many women shared their story. And a lot of them were like, yeah, I wanted to be in the games industry. Um, but I started off in a different path, but my my passion eventually led me to it. But that's that's very common in the games industry. I know a lot of people who started off not in the games industry and eventually moved or was able to move over to it. Um, but to to talk about the point of leveraging or making sure you do little steps, like little steps going to uh, a professor of mine once said, never be realistic about your dreams. Just be realistic about how you get there. And I was like, ha, huh, okay, well, that makes sense, right? It, it, it makes sense. Um, but what does that actually mean? So to those of you out there that are in high school, in college, or, or still, looking for that, um, uh, still looking for that first uh, industry job, or people who are unhappy with their current job and want to make that jump over to either the entertainment industry or another industry in general. <clears throat> Have a clear understanding of what you want to do, like we said before. Know what your goal is. And then go through and understand the steps that it would take to get there. So I will draw on my own experiences for me. I, uh, I won't go into the full details, but I wanted to be a producer uh, in college. I found out very late in my college career that I wanted to be a producer. Um, I didn't know what that meant. I had a vague idea, um, but I, I, that was my goal. Uh, still is, technically. Though I, anyway. <laughs> uh, sorry, my brain interrupted me. Um, but when I started off, I didn't get a job out of college as a producer. I actually, my first job out of college was a waiter. I, I waited tables for about a year and a half um, looking for jobs. and. I, I ran into the same problem that a lot of people run into is you the people want people with experience. But how do I get experience if no one's gonna be willing to give it to me? Like that that is that that was one of the hardest things that I had to overcome <laughs> was going, okay, well, when people say that that like they are looking for someone who has experience in this, but that doesn't mean that they just need someone who has official experience in that very specific role. If you're able to say, I want to be a producer, you should be able to say, well, what does a producer do? Like what, like wh- what, what is actually their role, their function on the team? If it's organizational, if it's financial, if it's creative, like you should be able to, to answer some of these questions. That'll give you an idea of what to do next. As a producer, I, I recognize that it was a lot of organizational and task management as an aspect of it. That's not the only thing they do, but that is an aspect of it. As a waiter, I had to learn how to be organized, very organized. I also had to learn how to deal with people. I also had to learn how to handle pressure. This is all like I'm just a waiter. I'm I'm like, you know, not not to belittle it, but like you know, in my mind at the time, I'm like I'm just a waiter. I I you know, looking back at where I am or looking back from where I am now, I would easily say yes, I handle my well, I handle myself well under pressure because of this one, <laughs> because of this one situation where I had. Here's a great example. Our um, and it segues really well. 
our uh, system, our computer system went down in the middle of the dining shift, and I had just gotten a 13 top, 13 party. Like I, I had just gotten them, and I was in the middle of getting their checks when the system went down. And so they what had to leave. <laughs> oh, they had to so leave. I, yeah. So literally, I still, I like, I, I, I kept notes, you know, like taking orders and things like that. But I had a very particular system to to write it all up. I was able to physically write down and and calculate out the totals and have that ready. And went back and checked with them while we were trying to reboot the system, let them know what was going on. Like, I, I helped manage that situation um, so that one, I could breathe because i was a wreck during there but i i learned composure that's one but two also like funneling information and necessary information in 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 that situation um while still retaining like all the other tables that i had so i had a major issue going on with this very instant and then i had two or three other tables that i still had to take care of and that was that's a big moment, but that was kind of a regular thing. You you had four or five tables that you had to take care of at various points or at various um, stages in their ex- dining experience. Um, and, and so when you talk about organizational skills, yes, I I do have some organizational skills that I I I have practice in. Uh, later on, I found out how the system crashed. I was funnily enough. I was the one who crashed it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I did um, because it went down a second time later on in the evening. Uh, basically, what happened was there's a free promo, promo, but if you split checks and do the promo, it, the system freaks out and it crashes. But yeah, like, I was a able bug like yeah, that in every right uh, retail or or customer service computer system, and. Uh, Guess what my first job in the industry was? Uh oh, I I should know this. QA? You know this? Yes, I was a yeah. QA tester. So when when I went in, for those of you who don't know what a QA tester is at a game studio, they're they're the uh, quality assurance team. They're the ones who test the game to make sure things function properly, um, so that the game can ship and that players have uh, a smooth experience. So if you ever run into a bug, that's QA. That's that's what they're meant to do. So, or one of the functions that they're meant to do. Uh, so whenever I I like after about a year and a half, I got um, one of my friends I met in college. He worked at at Gearbox as a QA tester, and he knew that I was looking for a job. And he goes, "Hey, I think you'd be a really good fit. Um, send me your resume, and I'll pass it along and see if we can because we we need to hire more people for the upcoming release." And I was like, "Cool!" So I sent it to him, and I flew down to Texas. I interviewed, and I I got the position. Um, and that was my first step into the industry. When they asked, "Yay!" When they asked, when they asked. What like what makes you think you're qualified for this job? I I had to sit down and think because you know you go online and you're like what kind of questions do they ask at an interview? If you have someone who can give you interview training or like run you through practice interviews, do it because it helps immensely. But yeah. I had to pull yeah I had to pull that that experience from. I'm like okay well a QA tester and I went and did my research because I didn't know what a QA tester was at the time. So I did my research and I tried to apply the things that I had the skills that I had to QA. And I told them I love figuring out problems. I love trying to re- like figure out what causes an issue. Um, and I have a background in 3D, so going into that, I, I uh, in in art, so I can kind of pull on that experience and knowledge and use that information to become more specific in my in my reporting, being uh, organized, understanding priority and how to prioritize. You know, learning from being a waiter and all these things, learning how to be a good team player. You'd be surprised at how often that is important, social skills, but we'll get into that later. But that was my first step. And then from there, it took me a year and a half, almost two years to get into a QA position, to get into the industry. And then from there, I went, okay, now I want to be a producer. Like that was my goal all along. But now I'm in a studio 
where I can actually go down the hall and talk to a producer and say, what do you do? And what can I do to help get me there? I was still young and I was still thinking like, oh, I want to be like a producer and I should be hired as a producer outright and stuff like that. No, most of the time you will never be hired for the job that you want to do. You will be hired adjacent to it. Like for instance, when I got to Riot, I was hired on as an art coordinator. I was not an art outsource manager. I, I, I was an art coordinator. Um, but through the job of being an art coordinator and then working and looking for opportunities to grow and learn, I learned the necessary skills uh, and had a, a foundational knowledge of the art outsourcing pipeline or process that I became a very natural fit for the art outsource manager job when it got spun up. So that's the other point that I would like to hammer in is you probably will not be hired for the position that you want. You will be hired adjacent to the position that you want. Um, everyone knows that story of the kid in college who goes out and gets a job right out of college. That is very rare and it's very hard. And the reason they are able to do that is because early in their career, early in their life, they said, I want to do this and I'm going to devote all my time into doing this. And they learned the roles and responsibilities, and they learned the craft and the technique to get there. Um, there were two or three students uh, at, at Purdue that were in the labs in the morning, went to class during the day, did their homework, and was in the labs at night just working, just doing, just making shit. That by the time that they were ready to graduate, they had an understanding, a base, fundamental understanding for a junior position four years of college of doing that and you get a base fundamental <laughs> understanding but they 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 dedicated themselves to it i on the other hand was an awful student um <laughs> and so yeah, we have that in I, <laughs> but i had to i had to learn i had to learn the hard way um so what what the point of me saying that is just because you don't get it on your first try doesn't mean you can't get it or that you won't get it it's just that you didn't get it that time. Keep working at it. Learn. Keep growing. Keep moving forward. It sucks. It is heartbreaking and heart wrenching. And if I could, if I could make it easier for anybody, I would. Um, but you know, you got to keep going. The only person who can do it is is you. Get friends. Make friends in the industry. Uh, talk to them. Work with them. Get knowledge and and understanding uh use that network um but at the end of the day the the most that people can do is just show you the door they can't they can't get you through it so that's that's the other other sticking point i would say <laughs> just to just to bounce off of what you just said um networking is often a very very large part of uh, getting any sort of position anywhere uh, and not just a job it, it, any opportunity becomes 10 times easier to acquire when you have that I don't want to say insider knowledge because that makes it kind of sound kind of malicious but you have that but it's not it's knowledge yeah yeah that you have that person in your life who works there like that that person for me in in terms of this podcast is Larry um Larry was integral into making this podcast a thing because he knew the people who we could get on as guests to make the show interesting. Um, he has all the knowledge of the game. This is this episode in particular is revolving around, around Larry because he has that knowledge and he he's that networked person for me. Um, and that I mean that can go for any sort of role anywhere. Um, how many people got their first job at even like a store or something just because they knew somebody who worked there and the manager said, "Hey, we need somebody." Uh, we need somebody to help cover the night shift or something like that. Do you know anyone? And and you say, yeah, I can get somebody on board. And that's a lot of people's first jobs. That's how I got my first job. Um, wasn't a very glamorous job, but it was it was <laughs> a pretty good job. Um, and yeah. that that I mean, that only exponentially grows the further up that sort of food chain you go. Um, and it's something that I, I love to do. I love networking. I love meeting new people. I love making exciting new connections um, with people in, in fields that I enjoy. Um, that's one of the main reasons I really enjoy doing this podcast, too, is, is I get to meet a lot of people who help make 
what I enjoy become a thing. Um, most of the people here, I, I imagine, are very adamant about League of Legends. It's one of their favorite games of all time. But it's very cool to see the people who have made that game a reality over the last um, five to ten years. So it's, it's very exciting to talk to those people. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, so I'll let Larry get back to what he was talking about. <laughs> no, you, you, reinforce, you reinforce the idea. That's an excellent point, too. Like, how many people, like, I got my, I got my, there you go, I got my waiting job because someone referred me. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it, that's it's, not a, that's it's just not how the world works. And, and yeah, it's a little unfair to people who don't have um, very good social skills, but it's also sort of the, the reason how people develop social skills, where you have yeah. to learn these. You have to learn to deal with other people if you want to move forward in your life. And that's just the better you can get at that, the, the more opportunities you'll have. <laughs> yeah there's always there's always people who kind of prove the uh are the like kind of the exception that proves the rule but you got mm-hmm. people out there like who made these indie games by themselves yeah. they did it by themselves and they're wildly successful and people are like oh yeah you know like i would love to do that but as as a contrast point how many indie games are out there that are not successful like that remember like just, <laughs> a lot just, a very large amount just, of indie games are out there. just remember like it it's it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of heartache but if it's what you want to do and you can and you can provide a living for yourself and doing it and you're happy then fine like that's awesome and you should do it um but it all comes down to knowing and being very honest with yourself about what you want to do and how you're going to get there like if that's if I had to put like I guess the past thirty minutes while well, we're talking about thirty minutes, fast thirty minutes of, of us talking that that is the that is the like the concise condensed point that I'm trying to make is be aware of what you're trying to do, why you're trying to do it, uh, and how it's going to affect you, and that that's just the first step. Um, <clears throat> Now, switching gears just a little bit. If you want to talk about uh, getting into the games industry with something that's more craft-based, like art or engineering or design, um, that is actually a little easier, personally. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's a little easier because that has a real tangible outcome like a real tangible thing that you can show to say, I am good at this. Because I can tell you, hey, I'm good at managing people. Prove it. Yeah, the only way that you can really show that is you have <laughs> references, I guess. You have people who you've yeah. worked with before. Um, yeah, it's... it's is that, yeah, that's probably really the only way you can say is like, the tangible yeah. proof of that. The, the resume... Here's another resume tip. Um from me is whenever you put something down on your resume don't say what you did i I, like as a qa tester i tested video games yes congratulations you just provided a job description that does not tell me what you did for the company for the team what value you provided like that's that's actually extremely important um if i were to say hey i tested video games um as a qa tester Versus I, as a QA tester, helped streamline and uh, re, like I, I evaluated and, and provided, uh, what's the word, uh, suggestions on how to streamline our testing practices that made us 25% more efficient. Like, that, that's, which one do you think is going to be more, oh, oh, maybe we can use this person? That's that's the important thing. Remember to remember to tell them why you are valuable. So for management, I can say I worked with the team uh, in evaluating how we did our processes that made us X, that did X. Um, and you can do that for anything. Um, you know, for like even even in waiting, like going back to wow, going back to being a waiter. Uh, if you say that, yeah, I worked with the waiters and we came up with a standardized, I helped, I helped develop a standardized notation system for orders that, you know, uh, helped increase or decrease uh, food um, mistakes or, or preparation mistakes by 
you know, 5%. That's, that's fairly impressive. That's, that's like, if I saw that on a resume for someone, uh, like, uh, for someone going for a junior position, I would be rather impressed for many, for many reasons, but, um, you can you can do that for any job that you're doing right now. Yeah, um, what kind we of bouncing about. bouncing off <laughs> what you were talking about. Um, I actually recently went through interview process at a hospital uh, near me, and it was very interesting. Uh, I went through two interviews actually. Um, it was interesting to see how I could apply my previous jobs to to that interview process because it was mm-hmm. it was a more corporate job than what I've ever had before. Um, it was a lot of questions that you would probably consider. I, I at least I considered them a little silly, but it's also like one of those things where it's just probably something that somewhere in HR they developed that and they have to use it, and nobody actually cared too much about it. Sure. But it, it was it was very interesting. Like, what was a pre uh, first example? One was like, what was the previous situation that you've been in, um, where? you like settled a conflict with, with another coworker or you, mm-hmm. you advanced a situation, um, blah, 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 stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. and my previous jobs, I have a pretty boring, um, at least in the, in the non online world, I have a pretty boring resume. Um, so it was very interesting to see like how I could say working at a store or working at a summer camp, how I could apply that to, um, to that job description. And it was it was a lot of thinking on your feet. Um, interviewing, in my experience, is a lot more about thinking on your feet and a lot less about preparing in ahead of in advance because it's very it's going to be very hard for you to uh, pre pre screen these interviews because obviously everyone has different processes. Every company wow. is going to be drastically different. Um, even every field is going to be drastically different. You're going to ask get asked a lot of different questions. Uh, for working at a a store than you would at a game dev studio, um, so it, it's it's less about like preparing answers in advance, which isn't a bad thing. You should probably have some sort of idea on what you should answer, but it's more about being able to think quickly and answer questions truthfully, but not so truthfully that you because truth to yourself sounds a lot different to other people. Um, like Larry was saying, working at a waiter's job may not have seemed very glamorous or exciting to him. Um, but he did actually do a lot of important stuff that helped him learn and grow and be, get better as a person in general. But in your head, in, in my head at least, I'm sure it works the same for a lot of people. Um, you tend to downplay your own achievements or downplay your own experience to the point where you don't find it relevant um, to anything. Like when I would talk about when i worked at a a a store i would just say oh i worked at a store but there's a lot of different things i learned working there um it helped me improve my people skills a a incredible amount i think anyone who works in customer service learns a a good deal of restraint and a good deal of patience um working with (laughs) difficult people (laughs) um so it's just it's it's don't even if you feel like you're embellishing you don't downplay your your experiences or your past um work 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 positions more than they should be uh maybe you don't upplay upplay them to the point where like it becomes hyperbole where you're saying like if you worked at a a a uh, a factory you don't say well i oversaw uh massive uh well i don't know (laughs) i don't know how you would overplay something like that but there we've all heard like people overplaying themselves a little bit too much but it's it's very difficult to do that don't don't underplay yourself overplay yourself anyway um that was my tangent on interviewing and and resumes um yeah. we can get back to <laughs> something whatever we were talking about i lost my train All of thought good. so I, I was thinking thank you it took gave me a second to to remember so that first part that first section while it is a lot um uh is is very much a general like if you want to work in the industry in just anybody that that would be my advice this is kind of that first part the second part or the part that we were going into is talking about uh craft specific work so you want to be an artist you want to be uh, an engineer stuff like that 
that is actually a little easier to prove to people your craft quality or skill. And that's where a lot of people um, can see uh, just immediate improvement or it, immediate. Uh, bleh, I'll get it out here here in a second. Immediate improvement immediate over improvement. time. So or immediate um, <clears throat> qualification. So my thing, I get I get asked to do portfolio reviews from students from time to time. And I always warned them, I will not lie to you. I am going to be honest. I am going to grade this uh, as if it were a professional submission to Riot Games or yeah. any game studio. And that, I mean, that's that's not not doing them a favor. That's definitely exactly. doing them a favor. Uh, and I always go away, or I go away. I always come away with, uh, or sorry, I'm mixing up. A, I always come back to them with go look at professional level or professional quality work and put your work up against theirs. And if you can tell a difference, if you can say which one is which, you're not ready. That's just, that's just the that, way it goes. Uh, that does, I don't know. That, uh, does that work? That doesn't work with everything, though, because there's a lot of stuff. Not, like that, that does work with what everything. you were saying. With yes, like, for with craft, like what for you, craft yeah, specific for craft stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's a big that's the big one is the craft stuff. Yeah. Um, that's scary. That, that's it's it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And even then, I I tell them like, don't even worry about like high level professional like craft. Just look at like entry level craft. Look at you know some of the demo reels that come out or student shows that come out of uh, Ringling or these really uh, well-known art schools for, for video game design or video game uh, art, uh, art production. And if you don't meet that bar, you're probably not ready yet. That's always the first thing. Just not ready yet. Uh, if, you, if you want to get better though, this is something that I've come to kind of realize from working with the artists at Riot and and talking to students is <clears throat> or people getting wanting to get into the industry is there there are a lot of people who want to go I want to make a, like I want to be a 3D artist at whatever I want to make the skins I want to be the person to to like 3D model the skins or to design the skins or to to you know make the splashes that's that's high level stuff man that's that's way up there you're trying to sprint before you've even learned to crawl, right? And that's not to be mean. That's not to degrade you or to, you know, to put you down. It's just a, it's just a simple evaluation of yourself and your skills. Now, some people out there, maybe they can, maybe they can walk and they do need to start running or jogging and then get up to sprinting. It's a shorter, it's a shorter path, but it's still the same idea. If you are just starting out, and if you get a review from someone like me going, this is, now, this is nowhere near ready, go back to s just the basics. Go back to simple, straightforward assets that you can create that you can really uh, polish your skills on, that you can really get up to that craft quality. So for instance, I am, a, as a 3D artist, or sorry, with a 3D background, <clears throat> I haven't opened up Maya in forever and I'm, you know, I'm getting back into it. And I'm like, I used to be able to make character models, but I've forgotten over time, like the good practices and good flows. So instead I went and looked up like a treasure chest for League of Le or for, uh, for WoW. I saw a concept somewhere where someone made a treasure chest. It wasn't even a complex treasure chest. It was just a regular treasure chest. And I went, I wonder if I can make that. I wonder if I can actually put that in 3D. That's not a character model. It's not, you know, it's not this big hulking spaceship. It's it's a simple prop. But then and I realized, you? nope, I can't make it. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> so that so now I'm like, okay, well, if I can't if I can't make this, what makes me think I can make the other things? I need to go back and and make the the thing in front of me and and move from there. So that's what that would be my suggestion for the artists out there that you know have gotten that that. Uh, feedback that they're not ready, their work's not quite up to par. Go through and find, gauge your level. Find where it is that you sit on that spectrum. Um, 
and if you can't if you can't make a simple prop as a 3d artist like well like like production ready high quality you know and by when i say high quality that does not mean high fidelity or you know like 20 billion tries or whatever that just means good solid craft construction to the production level that it needs to be at and if you can't if if you can put the two together and it's indistinguishable from someone who does it for a living cool now you're going on to the next step find the next thing that you need to be able to do or do well that goes for concept artists as well that goes for um oh fuck i just had the other animation there you go right like go back to the bare fundamentals illustration has uh fundamentals animation has fundamentals 3d modeling concept design there are fundamentals that the people in the industry have a, a particular mastery over mastery. They have a they have a particular knowledge in it. Um, you need to be able to be at that level at a bare minimum before you can even think about going too further, too much further. And we've had um, guests on in the past who have talked about uh, this sort of process. Uh, Andrew Bangle, he works at Treyarch on the Call of Duty series. Um, he started out wanting to become a, a animator, a 3D animator, and he did 3D design kind of on the side. Um, and he he got his first job at a game studio doing 3D design, doing that that uh, sort of stuff like Larry was talking about Maya, or I, I forget what particular program he uses. But um, and he still wanted to be a, an animator, so he was still very interested in that. Um, but it just turned out it wasn't in the cards for him. He, he's now working at Treyarch as a, a environmental designer. He, he doesn't do too much animating. I think he says he does a couple of projects, um, hobby projects and, and labors of love and stuff like that. Yeah. But he transitioned yeah. away from 3D animation towards 3D design, which maybe isn't the biggest transition in the world because it's still working in the same uh, programs in the same environments on the same type of stuff. But it's it's a good way to look at it where it's just like maybe your dream job maybe that isn't where you're going to end up maybe you have different ways to to reach working in this industry on similar things um maybe uh, that position is adjacent to the position that you're wanting to work in yeah like uh like what larry <laughs> right. does would you consider yourself a well you're you're kind of a producer right uh yeah everything but title yeah so, so so you wanted to become a producer and you started out and you didn't start out as a producer. You started out as a QA or as a waiter, if we want to go all the way back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but you, you worked your way into this role that does very similar things. Um, but it, it's not the same title. It's not the same credit. It's yeah. just it's it's different. Yeah. But it, it's still again, working in the industry and it's still doing yeah. doing this sort of work. Yeah, and again, like I said, it's it's the same roles and responsibilities. It's just different focus, different scope, different craft. But but the fact that I can say, well, this is what I do. This is these are my roles and responsibilities, and people can go, oh, well, that's very much like a producer. And I I kind of smile and I nod. <laughs> and I go, yeah, it's kind of like a producer. Yes, so, exactly. <laughs> yeah, interesting, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that so for for artists and stuff for anything that has a craft, just remember. Like set your goal, understand what you need to do to get there, and then just start work chipping away at it. You're not going to be a rock star overnight. It's going to take time. It's going to take dedication. Uh, but and you, just to balance if you out, want um, to do it, you can do it. Just to balance out what I was saying previously, there are people who do do that. They do have a dream job, and then they they actually get to do that dream job. Like I think um, yeah. Sonny Coda, he was on our podcast previously. Um, yes. He wanted to be a concept artist, and that's what he wanted to do. And yep. now he's a concept artist. <laughs> yeah. And he's a good one. He made he made uh, the concept art for Silas and a few other things. I would I think honestly, if you want to be a concept artist, listening to Sonny's episode Excellent. Yeah. Is, is an excellent resource. Yes. We um, want to have uh Sonny on in the future um when uh, to discuss when, some stuff again. Yeah. yeah. Probably when the Mordekaiser uh, update comes out, we'll probably have him back on then if he wants to come back yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. The uh, the other thing is Riot put out um, uh, a series oh, of videos yes. called "So You Want to Be an Artist" or "So You Want to Make Art." I forget which one it is. 
but it goes into and breaks down the individual art disciplines that are pretty prevalent at Riot and, and actually talks about what they do. And so if you were like, hey, I want to be an artist in the games industry, go watch that series. Go really learn about the thing that you think you want to do because I can guarantee you that what you think a concept artist does for probably 80% of you out there, what you think a concept artist does and what a concept artist is actually supposed to do or really does well, not the same thing. Yeah, to not bounce off that, um, Riot actually also is putting out, I don't know if it's done yet, but they're putting out some, um, <laughs> they had an interesting term for it. Uh, I think they call it the Um, Their series on how, I think it's on their Instagram on how uh, people who are starting out at Riot, how they start to fit in, um, what roles they, they fit into when they just get there and just start doing their stuff. Um, yeah. I'll see if I can pull that up later. Yeah. And link it in. But it, it, it's, it's sort of relevant to the discussion and working at Riot. Um. And that's really, you know, it's funny. We can, I, I'll save, I'll save the the specifics for questions that people might have. But you know, there's more to it. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't, uh, I don't think it's done yet. But they they will be working on, I guess, a series. It says follow along this week and get an exclusive look at our de denubification process. Yeah. Um, this is a cool Instagram, by the way. If you haven't seen it yet, go follow the Riot Games Instagram. They got a lot of cool stuff on here. There's also, good the Riot Games. There's also the Riot Games Illustration uh, Instagram, where the Splash artists will post things every now and again. I don't think that's how you spell illustration. There we go. Yeah. Um, I can't find it. Is it an Instagram? Oh. Yeah. I can, I can find it real quick if you want. Uh. Oh, Riot Illustration. Okay, here it is. Oh, you found it. Good. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So they'll post they'll post some stuff every now and again. Um, they're they're trying to work with the comms team uh, to figure out a more more regular cadence and and anyway stuff. Um, yeah, we got a little but, off yeah. track. Did, did we have uh, Sorry. anything else we wanted to talk about? Any, some 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 follow up with that. Yeah, just if if you have to go. If you have to to go and get a summary for the points for this, we talked about it before, and I'll repeat it because it is so important. Know what you want to do. Be knowledgeable about it. Be aware um, of of what it means. Uh, that's going to save you so much time. Sometimes you have to go on that journey. Sometimes you do. Uh, sometimes you don't, and sometimes you shouldn't. Uh, because a lot of the work is already out there, you just have to go and find it. But yeah, be be knowledgeable, be aware, go out and do your research. Uh, second point: make friends. Like no one gets out, no one does it on their own. Uh, find like-minded people. Uh, find uh, mentors in the industry. Find uh, people like who who can potentially help you. On your way, be upfront about it. Be like, hey, I want to work in the games industry. You work in the games industry. Can I ask you questions? Would you be willing to help me? Um, and and make those make those connections. Um, and then just do it. Shia LaBeouf that shit, right? Like, if you want to be an artist, make art. Get good at it. Do it well. And the only way you're going to do it is by actually doing it if you want to be a manager or if you want to be a producer find out what those skills mean find out what those those um roles like need to do well and then just start just start doing it i know it sounds cliche right if you want to be an artist make art yeah All right like there was a really fun sorry quick tangent there was a really fun article i read somewhere that you are what you do so a lot of times when people say Oh man, I I you know I'm an artist. Well, what do you do? Well, I go I I go work at a bookstore. Then, like, so you work at a bookstore. Like, if 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 you want to make art, if you want to be an artist, and you say to me, yes, I work at a bookstore, but I go home every night and I spend four hours doing illustrations. In my head, you're an illustrator. You're just working at a bookstore. It's a small it's a small distinction. But somewhat it's a important. stepping stone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but those those 
are kind of the high level things, you know, know what you're doing, be knowledgeable, make those connections, uh, and then get out there and just start doing it. Um, and if you can, if you can start doing that, you're going to be on a pretty good spot. You're going to be, you're going to be moving forward pretty well. Okay. Well, if there's not much else to talk about, we can, um, transition into the Q and a section after the podcast. But before we do that, I just wanted to say, if you hadn't listened to uh, last week's episode, we had Katie Anthony on, uh, aka Katie Chaos. She was a fantastic guest, um, probably one of our bigger guests so far. Uh, she had a great episode about uh, her job at Riot at, at, as a Skins QA, but less about that and more about um, her role in the community and, and all the things that she's done in order to further uh, League of Legends and, and communication with public as a whole. Um, one of my favorite episodes so far. And this episode has actually been really good too. So hopefully we keep going up on the on the quality bar. Um, if you do enjoy Dev Dive, we're on pretty much everywhere. You can't get away from us. We're on YouTube, uh, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, we save the VODs here on Twitch. Um, th- no matter where you are, you'll be able to find us. So if you do enjoy it, uh, subscribe on whatever platform you find relevant and we appreciate it. Um, leave comments on our YouTube video or in the discord or on the Twitter. Uh, we, we would love to answer comments coming from the future. Um, it, it's going to be very exciting to see where we can go with this show. Uh, we have a lot of interesting guests lined up in the future that, that haven't quite made it to the announcement stage yet, but we're very excited about them. Um, a lot of moonshots that we have too of potential guests that we could have on uh, if, if this becomes a accredited show that, that people are actually interested in, in watching and listening and, and coming on as guests. So um, hey, the, the real, main real way, quick, what's that for one of those moon, for one of those moonshots, if anyone has a connection to president Obama, we would love <laughs> to have him on the show. We have a lot yeah. of questions for him. And I would if just love to hear Obama, him talk. Make sure, make sure yeah. you uh, DM me just on Twitter. <laughs> put, yeah, just put in a good word. <laughs> but no, um, I'm serious. I think that would be fucking awesome. But continue. One of the, one of the uh, just to bounce off that, one of the moonshots that we actually might be able to get, um, I have a friend who has a connection with Concerned Ape. He's the guy who makes Stardew Valley or made Stardew Valley. Oh, I think yeah. he's still working on it. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely a possibility in the future. That would be a very fun episode. Um, and it's fun. It's going to be fun to branch out of uh, League of Legends. We've done primarily League over the past six episodes. I think we've had one episode not League of Legends. So we're going to be trying to branch out as much as possible. But it's just so much easier to get guests from Riot when you your co-host works at Riot. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we, we have uh, more distinctions in the future. Anyway, um, wrapping up the official podcast section, follow us on Twitter, um, check out our YouTube channel, um, check out any, any form of podcast host that you enjoy, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and keep watching, keep listening. Um, we're very excited to do this show, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So it's very, in, in, it's very impressive. I don't think that's the word I'm looking for. It's very encouraging that people are actually enjoying this and listening to it. So thank you for all you guys do as listeners and thank you for coming to our show tonight.